Hey, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ray. Uh, today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to work on the, uh, the Wild Willies today. We're actually going to be working on a core support for another project. Um, fella, a local fellow down the road here. His uh, name is Jerry. Jerry and Jessica, I know you're watching. This one's for you guys. This core support here is out of their uh, 51 Dodge panel van and um, the bottom of it here is all rusted out as you can see and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a new bottom piece here. We're going to cut this out and uh, put a new bottom piece in. This here is the, uh, the center bracket that goes in like this as you can see it's all rusted out. We're also going to be doing this piece here. I don't think we're going to be getting to that on this video, but uh, that'll probably be the next one. So today's video, we're going to work on this. To speed things up a little bit, what I've done is I've measured from side to side and up there also, so it's the same measurement. We put a mark here in here and then brought those up. Then I brought this down, centered it, and the best we could, we tried to um, re uh, duplicate these angles and whatnot. So this is what we came up with. If you can see these here, this is our center line. This line and this line is the center of our bolts in the end. These will come down uh, through the bottom of this so he can bolt it back down to his bracket in the frame. And this is what we come up with, is this bracket right here, and this bracket right here, put together, makes up this area here. So these here, uh, I cut out on the plasma cutting table, which it doesn't have to be done that way it's just faster and easier for me to do it that way because I have it but you could easily lay this out on a piece of steel and cut it out with a zip cut and then use that one for a pattern to do your other three if you wanted to you could do it all in one piece also if you wanted to this is just a little bit easier for us to make it in multiple pieces like this as you can see the front and the back will then be the same so they'll sit right up in here like this so but the, these here are they're pretty rusty they're hard to uh, make exact also what I did is I made these plates here which will be this area here so in the end what we'll do is we'll weld them like this and then they'll be you know like that so what we did is if you can see this here Teresa I lined these up to the top I made a mark there because that'll be a bend for this little area here and then that's where our bend starts and then I went approximately about every quarter inch or so until we got down here, I just kind of set it like this so you can see it better, Teresa. Teresa's on the camera today. She's doing an awesome job so far. So we're going to keep her around for a while. As you can see, this kind of roll like this. And that's about where the end of our is. And then we'll cut the extra off as we go. So we've got everything cut just a little bit long so we can trim so okay now what we're going to do is there's a few different ways that we could bend these we certainly could bend them you know on the edge of a workbench or something uh, and just keep working it in you can hammer tap them in a vise uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do this what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this piece here with us and we're going to walk over to a, a homemade break that we made years and years ago and we're just going to kind of hand bend it in that. So we'll wander over this way. And 
And again, there's our mark. So we're going to put it in as square as we can, like this. We're just going to make a little crease up like that. And we'll just keep checking it. Okay, it's got to go a little bit more. Okay, that's not too bad right there. And we can always fine tune it a little bit with a hammer also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around and uh, we'll start this bend around this corner a little bit. We'll just take our time and just do a little bit. Okay, and it might be a little too much, it might not be enough, we'll see here in a minute. Yeah, it's a little too much, but that's okay. We can always flatten it out a little bit. Yeah, and I went a little bit... Okay, so I gotta spread it apart just a little bit. So I can probably tack that and work it with a hammer just a little bit. Okay. Lighter hammer, and we'll wander back over here. So you probably eat like this, Teresa, so you can see it. Okay, I'm just going to put a little tack in this corner right here.
Okay, I'll put a clamp on that. And uh, see if I can pull it just a little bit tighter. Okay, that's good. Okay, we'll Okay, that's what it looks like so far, nice and flush. Across there, pretty tight. I'll go ahead and push this down. And we'll finish a couple more tacks. Okay, so there's the back side, which we'll go this way, and now we'll go ahead and put another one of these, like this right here, we'll duplicate the same thing we just did. We're using 14 gauge metal on this. The uh, original is uh, real close to that, so we decided just to duplicate it. We probably could have went with some heavier gauge, but this has lasted since 1951, so I think the gauge that's being used will, will be good.
Okay. There's half of our core support. All you have to do is continuously weld that and continuously weld this. I probably won't do that until we get everything cut apart and put together. But there's there's that half right there. Okay, so what we have to do now, I just gonna push this out of the way. Just gonna bring this down. So we can get it close to our marks here. What I'm going to do is we have the bottom of this flushed up on our table here. So I'm going to actually mark our, uh, our table right there. And then I'm going to mark this here. Okay, the reason I'm marking my table is once I move this, I can measure from here up to my mark. And then what that will enable me to do is take this piece here and sit down and we can measure up and cut this off also so we're at the same height from here to our cut as what we are from here to our cut if that makes sense to y'all Okay. Now what I'm probably going to have to do is pull it towards me. Something like that right there so I can get a wheel in there and cut that. Okay, glasses are all fogging up. It's very hot, very humid here in Michigan again today. Even though our, our shop is kept pretty cool compared to what it is outside, it's still very, very humid. Okay, what I need is my tape measure. I have to measure up. Six and three quarters of an inch, or I could probably just set this right here. Put it flush down here on the bottom, like that, and that should be our six and three quarters also. Yes. So I can go ahead and mark it right here where I marked our table. Let's see, is that right? 
this way with it. I was right the first time. It's gotta go, yep, it's gotta go that way. That's the way I got it. Okay. Just double check and making sure that it looks like it's going to line up. I got this one here as well. Okay, we'll go ahead and cut it. We're not afraid to cut nothing. We can always weld it back together, right? Sure. Which actually, I better do a couple more tacks because I think. Once I cut that, it's going to let it spring loose. So let's throw a couple more tacks on there real quick. Okay, now we can cut it loose. Without having it spring back.
Okay. Now we've got to do the same thing with the other one. Make up the other one and do the exact same thing. There we go. Not bad. We can make that work. And we'll do the same thing we did with the other one. We'll start packing it and we'll put a clamp to it. Just hold this one. I don't think I need to put clamp in it. that one. Now what we'll do is we'll flip it over and put this one in there. that one. Okay, now we're going to have to do the same thing we just did on the other one. And if I was thinking while we had it down there, I should have um, marked both sides. But 
that's okay. Put this one back down to our mark right there. I can this one down. Like that. And we should be able to be at our same six and three quarters. that right there right alongside that nut just like we did the other one all right we marked our table so we'll go ahead and cut this one Okay, Teresa had to get a different battery in, and while she did that, I went ahead and just cut that off. But now we pushed it off to the side, and we have the the uh, bracket back in here. Or the the uh, piece that we're working on is back in here again, and I just marked that six and three quarters mark. this off.
center mark. That right there. This one. I think we want to bring this down and see if there's any alterations down there. I think we can weld that center. I think we can tack that in place. Just like this. Line it up with our straight edge of our bench here. This one here, I'll have to bend with the hammer just a little bit, straighten them up. There we go. I'll tack that one now. Put my ground back on. There we go. Okay, now it'll be a lot easier to put in there and trial fit it. marks here. Looks good. Needs to be tipped up just a little bit here. Why don't you stop for a minute?
Hey guys, day two on the 51 Dodge uh, radiator support. We went ahead and welded all this up on the inside and I got the holes drilled here for the, um, the mount. This is the old mount that used to be in there. So what we're going to do is uh, put two new bolts in it. This one here is in it. I just uh, bolted it on or nutted it on there. We'll go ahead and put this one in. And by putting the nuts on like this, I can get it started. There we go. Putting the nuts on like this, what we're going to be doing is uh, two different things. As you can see, the um, bolt is definitely way too long for um, what we're using here but it's just a couple bolts that I had and uh, the half inch size and uh, that were threaded all the way to the head so we'll go ahead and work this nut on there and like I said this is serving two different uh, purposes one obviously is holding it in place so I can weld the head here. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off to the same length as these. And once this is welded in, it'll hold this. And then I can take the nut and bring it back off and it'll clean the threads up. So it's a lot easier to start back on there. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and weld the head of the bolt back here to the flat plate. And I'll go ahead and turn the welder on. This here's broke loose. I'm gonna just try to move it out of the way just best I can here so I can see up in here. And what we're going to do now is uh, cut those bolts down so they're of the correct OK. 
Okay, inch and a quarter. go now that should make it a little easier to start on there just like that up a little bit snug them so they stay on there okay now this piece here is what we're going to do next and I don't have a brake handy uh, I have one packed away in a bunch of tools that's in a trailer it's not handy to get to but we're still going to make this we're still going to be able to bend this and you can do this very easily with um, using nothing more than your cutoff wheel and some lines and an edge. Uh, a steel table would be better. I do have steel tables that I could use, but I'm going to show you how even a wooden table, a piece of plywood, as long as it's good and flat, and you can see that I've clamped it here to a 2x4. Same thing on this side to hold it good and flat. Any flat surface with a good edge should work because again we're not bending anything that's super thick it's this here is very very thin and what i have to work with is a piece of 18 gauge so 18 gauge is much thicker than it, than this stuff is here so it'll be a lot stronger uh, we won't have to put these ribs in here like they did from the factory to keep its strength because the material is uh, going to be thicker so it, it should hold up because we're still going to have these bends here in it so we shouldn't have to put these factory bends in so what I'm going to do is push this up like that up here now this is four foot in length and uh, we'll have to cut it down to uh, 
in this case, 38 and 3 quarters. So, 38 and 3 quarters. And again, just simple hand tools can get this job done pretty easily. I'm just using a carpenter square. Some people call them a framing square. Whichever. It's just a, a plain old fashioned square. And we're going to cut that off with our side grinder and a cutoff wheel. Now the way this is sitting here, the distance here in the middle is actually three inches from the bend to this point and it's like two inches back here or it, it would be two inches if all this was here. So this has got an angle to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work from our flat edge be in our factory edge right here to our angle. So first of all what we're going to do is find our center which half of 38 and 3 quarters is 19 and 3 eighths. So that's going to be our center 19 and 3 eighths. dripping sweat. It's very, very, very humid here in Michigan today. It's uh, thunderstorming here and uh, you can maybe hear it on the camera. It's dripping outside pretty good. It's very, very warm. And here's our center line. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to start from down here and what we have from our 38 inches actually comes from here and this is a little bit of a, a bevel so what we're going to do is we're going to measure from there over which looks like about seven inches so we'll mark seven inches on each side And that's where this area here is, where this, this uh, from there to here. Now, if you can see right here, there's a little tab. And that tab is bent down, and there's a, a welded on nut to the sheet metal, and there's a bolt that goes through the back side. So, can you see that, Teresa, a little bit better? Okay, there you go. And this side here, is busted right off. This is actually supposed to be connected to this right here like that and it's busted right off. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this little tab here figured right away. Which again if we figure from about here over looks like we're about two and a quarter. So we'll come over here about two and a quarter. This side two and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make approximately an inch and a half or so line there. About the same on this side, about an inch and a half long. It'll be a little bit longer than we need, but that's okay. 
like that. And then, being that this one here broke off, we can measure this here real easy. And that's, that's one inch from where that bend is to the bottom of this. That's an, that's an inch. So what we'll do is we'll come up here an inch. We'll do the same thing here. going to bend this tab here but this is going to be cut so now what we're going to do is we're going to measure from this point to this bend right here and that is approximately two inches so if we hook here we got an inch and then we got these two inches so we'll come up three inches Here in the center at three inches. Well, marker's not doing a real good job of marking on that. I'll have to reduce some of that line. So that is our bend. Now this has got a little bit of a lip to it right here underneath it. And if you want to get fancy with it and put that lip in there, that's fine. But this relief right here actually comes all the way up to the lip or to the bend. So I'm not going to put this little return in here. I don't think it's that necessary. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a, a used cutoff wheel and I'm just going to make a round like this. The same thing over here. So, this being a bend, I'm going to go ahead and mark this bend. And we're going to bend this one. Okay. Now we have another bend from there to there. And that is about three inches. So we're already three inches up. We go another three inches. That'll take us to six inches.
Okay, and I'm also going to write bend right here. Okay, now that brings us to this point here. Now, here in the middle, that is, like I said, like three inches because it's got that point to it. Actually, I take that back, it's three and a half inches. So, we got six, so we need to come up here, nine and a half. And then, if I remember right, yeah, this is like two inches. So, we need to come here, eight inches. Okay, now this lip right here is approximately an inch. So we need to go up another inch, so that'll be nine here. And that'll be up to about ten and a half here. should be about nine here. Okay, so this is a bend, and this one's a cut, and this is also a cut, this line here. So this line here, all the way around here, gets cut out. This little tab and this little tab gets bent.
these arcs are normally a little easier to do when your wheel is smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what my other cuts are going to be. That will make sense to you here in a second. What I'm going to do is come over approximately an inch. What I'm going to do is figure here in the middle, half inch on each side. That leaves me with about roughly 18 inches so I'm coming to nine and I'm gonna go a half inch each way Same thing here Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut from here to here, and from here to here, and here to here, and here to here. And on this one, we're also going to have to cut from here to here so we can fold these flaps. Because what we'll probably have to do is like cut over just a little bit here and over here and actually make it come down so when they come up what we'll do is we'll fold one and we'll fold the other and we'll just cut one cut we'll cut both of them and then we'll end, end up actually tacking that together so all these cuts that we put in here is going to help us fold this bend it without having to use a break and then we'll use our welder to tack it all back together with so it'll be strong
okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to replicate these bends right here. So this first bend, it lays flat just like it's laying right now. So what that means what we have to do is flip it over this way and bend it down. But we don't have a mark here no more. That's okay, we can get our mark back. That first one was an inch. So all we need to do here is just take a small hammer, a body hammer, a ball peen hammer, uh, before we do that, we clamp it. And we will clamp that down and then we just work this down. like that. And we'll do the same thing on this. This is the same as that. So now this bend also needs to bend this way. So what we're going to do there is finish this line across. This is sitting, so we have to bend it this way. So this is our inside of the bend right there. So what we will do is we'll turn it right back over like we just did the last one. And we'll use two clamps on this one.
here. So now, getting pretty much the same thing going on there. Now, this bend has to come up. So, we will put this one here. What I'm doing is I'm lining that up with the edge of my wood, my bench. So we're going to bend it here, 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 and here. So we'll tap a little bit here, a little bit there. I'll be pushing on it like this. It'll want to raise up here. If you have another clamp and you want to put it there, or a bunch of weight, that's fine. I think what we'll be doing is pushing here and here at the same time, kind of like this. started like this might even be able to just work it by hand some of this just like that go okay so this is what it's looking like now this one has got to be bent down so we can do that by lining it up this Here's going to be a little bit trickier <clears throat> because we have this area here that we've already been. Straighten that up there a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. bench here. <clears throat> Get this right there.
And there we go. There is our replacement. <clears throat> now, as you can see, this is cut on a little bit of an angle here, and I, I made it full length out here. So what I have to do is I have to come in about a quarter inch here, cut this, and then come back just a little bit, come down, so it's got this angle in it. And that's what I'm going to do right now. <clears throat> camera today. She's uh, doing a whole lot better job than I could guys. Even if she messes up she's still doing way better than I could do. <clears throat> so here we go. About there. I can probably get a lot of it by just doing this.
center to center. It's 36 inches. <clears throat> Just over 38, so I gotta come in about an inch on each side. I should have marked it on this side. This would have been a lot easier. Right, let me do this again for the third time. Three times a charm, right? Something else, guys. This is a brand new bit, so you can see we have our numbers across here. I want a 3 8 hole, so that's this one right here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that so when it spins, I can tell what step that we are on. We're on our 3 8 step, so that's what I want right there. was holding the other end of it for me and operating the camera both so multitask zip cut and we will put this in place and let's see it'd be better to cut this side or the other side probably the other side yeah it's a little flatter let's 
So we're cutting this one and this one. And I need these. I'll get a couple nine sixties. what we got <clears throat> what we will do is we'll weld the nuts to this sheet metal on both sides so it'll be like it was originally and then what we will do is we will put little tacks across these and weld them up and um, there we go we'll have her so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of the welding right now and uh, how are we looking for time, Teresa? Any idea? Okay. So, I'll wrap it up here in a few minutes, guys.
Okay. Hold it down just a touch. And let's see. Prop it up just a little bit. I got my tape measure here. Okay, you can get the picture of what we're going to do is we'll go across like that every inch to oh, three quarters or so to an inch, somewhere like that. And then we'll come back and we'll get some more inside in between them. And then in between them, before long, it'll be a, a pretty consistent welder across there. And uh, it'll be all welded up and strong. It's pretty strong right now. Um, this bend here is uh, the weakest part of the whole thing but that's the way the other one was and this material is quite a bit thicker so once they get everything all bolted together and in the truck uh, it should hold the, the shroud and whatnot pretty good so there you have it guys that's how we basically rebuild something that you can't find anymore and just put it all back together and make her strong and if you know if we have to put a little support in there or something we could do that too but i don't think it's going to need it so don't forget to hit that notification button subscribe to our channel and leave a comment we'll see you on the next one